Hi Spring fans, welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. In this installment, we're going to take a look at two of my favorite things, Kotlin and Spring Integration, about which I've spoken on various occasions uh, in this very series. Uh, one, in fact, the very first episode of Spring Tips was all about Spring Integration, so I'm going to refer you to that for the fundamentals, uh, but suffice it to say, there's a uh, a framework called Spring Integration. It's, it serves use cases of enterprise application integration. If you've ever read Bobby uh, Hope and Gregor Wolf's seminal tome, Enterprise Integration Patterns, uh, enterprise, app, enterprise Application Integration uh, uh, Patterns, you'll find that that's uh, basically the documentation for Spring Integration. Uh, enterprise Integration has uh, to do with uniting or integrating <clears throat> legacy services and systems or disparate services and systems and data and uh, connecting them. Okay, uh, there are increasingly many way, increasing many ways uh, to integrate different services and systems, uh, and Spring Integration provides a rich toolbox to address those use cases. So when you think about integration, think about the composition of uh, events uh, of messages coming from one system to the other, uh, and we are going to also look at it in terms of its brand new Kotlin DSL. So in order to do that, we're going to go to start.spring.io. We're going to use Maven for this build, uh, and we're going to use uh, Spring Boot 2.30 M4. So anything 2.30 or later will work just fine. Uh, we're going to use Kotlin. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to call it our application uh, Kotlin Spring Integration. And we used Java 11, but we could have used Java 8 because it's, it's Kotlin. So we get nice features that look sort of like they're <clears throat> coming from Java 20, uh, but they're, they compile down to Java 8 bytecode. So we're going to hit explore. That's got everything we want. Oh, the one thing I might want is uh, we want to have spring integration. So I'll do command B, spring integration. And we want the reactive web support as well. And that's it. Okay, so we're going to hit command enter, which is generate. That'll give us a new project. We'll open this up in our IDE. And we're going to create a very simple integration flow here. Something that, uh, that uh, you know, demonstrates some of the key concepts in the new DSL. So, Cotton Spring Integration. Here's our application. Let's make the font a little bit larger. Okay, 18 font 20. Very good. All right, so there's our application. And what we're going to do is we're going to build an application that, uh, you know, reads from a directory using an inbound file adapter. So in order to do that, we're going to bring in the spring integration file uh, dependency here. That dependency is part of spring integration. It's a, one of the many crayons in the crayon box. And with it on the class path, we can now handle events being produced by the appearance of or the removal of files in the file system. So we just bring in org spring framework.integration and we create a new, we give it the version, but we don't actually have to do that ourselves because that's managed for us by the uh, bill of materials that Spring Boot provides. So spring integration version, there's this. All right, so Kotlin Spring Integration application. Uh, we'll say class um, file configuration. And the file configuration uh, is going to be a configuration class. Okay. And it's going to talk to things using channels. Now, channels are a named conduit. It's a pipe. It's a thing through which messages will flow. So we're going to create three different channels, one for text files, right? So we'll say message channels uh, dot uh, direct dot direct dot get at bean. And here's one for CSV files. And here's one for everything else errors. Okay. Very simple example. Now, at configuration. Good. So there's our configuration class. And we can now use those channels here in our file, file configuration. I'm going to inject those definitions here. Private file channels, uh, channels configuration, et voila. Just call this channels. All right. Now, the flow 
is going to be the thing that defines the pipeline. It's going to be the thing that defines how uh, processes that are perceived on the file system are then routed. And we're going to, we're not going to do too much here. All we're going to do is we're going to use Spring Integration to move files from one folder to another based on the presence of those files, based on the extension of those files. Okay, but this will give us a chance to see some of the uh, amazing DSL in its beauty and glory. So we're going to say files flow. And here we could use the Java integration flows dot and then from and, and so on. But as with a lot of the different Spring products you've become familiar with uh, that now have spr sprouted Kotlin DSLs, we have a, 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 a nice function you can call here. Uh, and with that function, we can then uh, source the pipeline, source the, the what kicks off the pipeline. It's going to be the event that comes from something. That me that event could be a message arriving on a channel that we explicitly put in there, or it could be something coming from a, a message source. Uh, a message source is something that produces a message whenever there's an event in the real world. So in this case, when there's an event, uh, when there's a file in a file system, that'll be published as a message, which is an event that we can then consume. So here I'm going to say uh, files dot inbound adapter adapter and of course in order to do this work we need a file reference here so private file uh, input equals file okay java file and it'll be um what is it going to be it's going to be desktop in and we need to uh, dereference the uh, home environment variable so system dot get env uh home and we can use string interpolation here so i can actually just put that inside the string it's fine uh output okay out okay and what else do we need i guess we want to say uh, this to input we want this directory to be created automatically if it hasn't already been created and there's our entire flow that's the entire integration flow uh from there we are going to uh, we want to be able to, to monitor the directory, but we want, we want the, the file system to tell us what's happening. We want, it, we want it to tell us that there's a new file. Unfortunately, that's just not what file systems do. They're just not built for that. So we need to create a polar, and the polar will monitor the directory, and when there's a new file, uh, it'll give us a, um, a uh, uh, you know, Spring Integration will see the, the new file, and it'll It'll treat that as a delta and it'll publish a message, which we can then respond to as sort of a sort of an event. So I'm going to say, uh, you know, I want to monitor it every 500 milliseconds. And I'll say, uh, let's say, what else? Max messages per poll. Let's just do one. That's fine. Okay, so that's the source. I'm saying get the data from the file, the inbound file adapter. Use that polar. So file adapter, polar. That's the source of the pipeline. And then from there, I can do anything I want to do. And right? I can use all these different spring integration uh convenience uh, methods in the DSL just as before, but you'll see that they've been uh, adjusted to accommodate uh, reified generics in Spring Integration and to uh, support some of the niceties that Kotlin gives us. So let's create a simple pipeline here. We're going to say filter, and what I want to do is I want to filter the incoming data type, and I have to specify that here. It's a file. In the Java API, I would have to say file.class in a lot of cases, but here uh, I can just use it as, as a reified variable there. And I'm given a pointer to the file payload, which is generated by this. So the, this thing is going to emit a file. It's going to put it out there for something downstream to consume, which it'll be routed to this handler. Uh, and it'll be, you know, the input will be the output of the previous thing. So the output of the previous thing was a Java IO file object. The input thus is a file object as well. I'm telling the type system, let me treat it as such by giving it a, a generic. And I can create a variable, an implicit, an explicit variable like that if I want to, since it's a Lambda. Or I can use the implicit variable, it, right, which is a nice thing from Kotlin, but uh, also from Groovy. It's just a very convenient way to let me say, hey, um, you know, I want to, uh, I want to uh, just assume I'm going to have one parameter. I'm just going to name it it. Everybody knows what it is, okay? Once I've determined that it is a file, I'm going to, that means I'm going to keep the, the message in, in the flow. If it's not a file, I'll just dis discard it and just uh, move on. But if it is a file, I want to then route it to the right handler. So here I'm going to be given a file reference as well. And I'm going to, my job is now to return a channel reference, right? I want to say if I have a channel 
or rather, if I have a message who has an extension of type of type .csv, I want to then send it to the CSV channel, and uh, and so on. So I'm going to use. I could do a lot of if else and that kind of thing, but I would I much rather uh, return this. Uh, I'd much rather make this a little bit simpler. Here I have a route function. The return value must be a channel reference or something like a channel reference. It has to be something Spring Integration can use to determine what channel to send this message on, uh, and so. I'm gonna the the thing I'm given here is a file right just like before um, it's an it I can just say it and I can then say okay when it dot extension so first of all when is a like a switch statement it's a very smart switch statement uh, the closest thing that we have in Java is that uh, well we don't have it unless you're using Java 14 it's a it's a case uh, expression that also returns a value right so it's an expression as opposed to a statement um, and it's much more concise, and I can also use that in tandem with some other extension functions in Kotlin. So Kotlin has the ability to retroactively add things to existing types. Uh, so, for example, in this case, I can add, uh, you know, Kotlin.io. Uh, dot extension, um, and that extension is very useful. I've always wanted to be able to ask a file what its extension is. In Kotlin, I can. In Java, I just have to figure it out myself. So I'm going to say, okay, given a, a um, lowercase extension I will say if the extension is CSV then channels dot CSV if it's a txt okay and if it's neither none of those I just want to say else channels dot errors all right so there's my router. It's uh, easy. It's very easy to implement this using Kotlin code, using the DSL there. Now, when I send it on the outbound uh, CSV channel or the outbound TXT channel, I want to then send it to a handler that downstream. The reason I could do this right here, I could actually just write the code here, but what I want to do is I want to create another flow. And the reason I want to do this is because it's nice to stage these things, to separate them apart. That way they can be reused. Think of them as functions, right? You want the smallest functions possible. Small, discrete, very, very reusable, uh, very malleable sort of uh, flows. Okay, so here I'm introducing channels in between my flows. That way, if something else wants to originate the message that gets routed into a flow, it can do that, right? I don't have to extract it out from a large monolithic flow. And um, if I want to then move this flow from one node to another, if I want to extract it out into a separate service, I can do that too, because again, from Spring Innovation's perspective, everything is an in inbound adapter or an outbound adapter. Everything is an inbound channel or an outbound channel. Uh, who knows or cares whether that channel leads to a, a Kafka broker or a RabbitMQ or whether the messages that I receive from that channel come from RabbitMQ, right? Or, or Kafka or, or MQTT or whatever. So I can I can easily easily tease these things apart into separate microservices by doing the work now of, of teasing them into small separate flows. So the first flow is to support txt so i'll say fun txt flow integration flow and here i'm not going to be using a spring integration inbound adapter instead i'm going to use channels dot uh, dot txt okay and so once i have that uh i'm going to then handle it by routing it to the outbound adapter right i'm not doing anything i could process it i could uh enrich it or some something like that but i don't really need to so I'll say outbound. And what I want to do is I want to create a file for CSV and for TXT. Okay, so this file is actually just going to be based on output CSV and TXT. TXT. Alrighty, so outbound adapter um, here. And uh, this will be txt sorry uh, txt okay auto create directory is true and that's basically it right there you go I'll do the same thing here for CSV 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 now there's my my uh, two flows. I should also create an error handler, um, and I leave it up to you. I mean, you you can already see how that would work right here. 
if you wanted to create an error handler, one thing you might do is log it off to some uh, file system. You could send an email, send in a notification, send it uh, to RabbitMQ. You could do all sorts of things that would be useful here, um, but it, it would basically look like this. This is you just you'd route the the message from the error channel to some error error handling flow, and then you could do whatever you wanted with it, even if just sim as simple as logging it out, right? Uh, whatever you want. Okay, let's see. What does that look like if we run it? Here we go. Compiling. I hope. Oh, is it not? Come on. There we go. Okay, it's up and running. So now let's try it out. So, cd desktop, okay. So, cd in, empty, cd out. We've got the two, two subdirectories, but we've got nothing in them. So let's now cd desktop out, tr uh, watch, n minus one tree. So tree will just show me the tree that I showed you. And now we can, it'll, it'll pull that every second using watch minus one. Uh, and we'll go to in, and I'll type in touch hello dot txt. As I do that, you can see it shows up there under this txt directory there. No problem. Great. Touch hi dot csv. All right, good. There it is as well. Um, touch, uh, you know, if I, if I do something else, if I put some other kind of file in there, it's going to, exp you know, it'll throw an exception, right? Because there's nothing listening to that. Um, but uh, test.csv, you know, and so on. So we have a, uh, a, in a Spring Integration flow that uh, uses the very convenient Spring Integration Kotlin DSL. I really quite like this. I've showed you how to create flows that originate from inbound adapters, how to use some of the the idioms here, some of the uh, the, uh, the processors here, and there's a lot of them, right? There's things like transform, there's filter, there's route, there's split and aggregate, uh, bridge. These all have been updated in the light of Kotlin to be even more natural, right? So a lot of places where you would have otherwise had to pass a class literal are no longer there. Uh, we can just do it thanks to pseudo reification, right? Kotlin has a bit a way of reifying generics at runtime. Uh, it's a bit of a kludge because it fundamentally um, the JVM doesn't support that, but it works, right? For our purposes, we get the effect of not having to worry about reified uh, generics, right? It just works. And uh, a lot of times, you know, simple simple things like letting you create lambdas that don't require an explicit parameter. Those are nice, right? The low ceremony uh, lambdas in Kotlin make this a lot more pleasant. Um, this is a lambda. It looks like a, almost like a config block, you know, it's just so, Idiomatic, I like it. Uh, very, very easy to sort of parse. Okay, inbound adapter. Here's the polar. Here's the flow. Step one, step two, and then so on. Right, and and the outbound of the filter is the inbound of the router. The outbound of the router, well, in this case, goes to a particular channel. And then you can see how we listen. We create a flow that kicks off when there's a new message on that channel. Right. So the outbound to CSV eventually reaches here. Right. So my friends, we've learned a lot. Uh, I, I really love this DSL. It's brand new, so you can feel free to kick the tires, try it out, uh, and then sound off. Obviously, the Spring Integration team is, as always, ever so happy to hear from you. With that, my friends, uh, thanks so much for watching, uh, and we'll see you next time.